Hello friends, Miss Emma here, bringing you video number 5 in our Tinkercad 3D modeling series. In today's video, I'm excited to be bringing you a customizable 3D printed keychain design. Before we dive in, I want to showcase a couple of table and chair design projects that were sent in to us from last day's videos. So take a look at these students' designs. As we go ahead and dive into our keychains, I have gone ahead and opened up a new work plane on my Tinkercad account and renamed it to Keychain. As we get started designing these, let's keep in mind what size a keychain ornament would normally be. We don't want it to be too big so that it gets super bulky on our key ring with other objects, and we don't want it too small so it gets lost or broken easily. You can make your keychain whatever shape you want, but my suggestion is to make it within the dimensions 40 by 60 by 4. Once I have a keychain that is a good enough size to be seen, but not small enough to be broken or too bulky, I'm going to go ahead and select what color keychain I want. I'm going to make mine light pink. The next thing I need is going to be a hole to put my key ring through. So I can select the cylinder hole to make a nice round hole. The dimensions of my key ring should be about five millimeters by five millimeters. The height won't matter much because I want to cut all the way through my keychain. Once I have that at about the right distance from the top of my keychain, I'm going to go ahead and align this by selecting both the hole and my keychain base. I want to align that to the middle. And then I want to group right away so I don't mess up that align and it go ahead and cuts through the base of my keychain. Now I have this nice blank canvas for the start of my customizable keychain. The first tool I want to draw your guys' attention to are the text options. So under basic shapes, you have this text option here, but there's also the script option under the all. On the second page of the all shapes, you have this script here. If I wanted to place text directly on my keychain, I could just pull it out and spend a lot of time putting it directly on the face of my keychain, because I really need to make sure this isn't floating on top of my keychain if I do want to print it out. To save myself some time, I'm going to select the top face of my keychain using the work plane tool. Now if I drag out the script option, I get this text here, and this menu will pop up. I can type in whatever text I want under the text option, Let's say I want this keychain to say my name, Emma, for Miss Emma. Now I could change what font this is in, which is an option that's not on the text tool under basic shapes. So if I hover over each of these, it will change the text for me. There's a calligraphy option. Let's say I want stencil. Then I can, of course, change the color of this. And I'm going to want to rotate around to make sure this isn't sticking out a massive amount like it is right now. That would not be very effective on a keychain. And then I need to resize it so it actually fits. Once again, I'm going to want to align this right to the middle of my keychain so everything looks nice and symmetrical. To get my work plane tool back to normal, select my blue face. And I'm going to go ahead and select both the text and my keychain so far. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my text is aligned to the middle. It looks like it already is. And then I'm going to go ahead and group it. Remember that once you group it, the color changes to all one color, but I can select the multicolor tool to maintain the shape, the colors that I had on the shapes prior. So right now I have text that's just sticking out a little bit. You do have other options than to have it raised off of your keychain slightly. You can also indent things or make it a hole that goes all the way through. I'm going to show that to you guys with a couple of other shapes. So let's say I wanted to put a heart on my keychain. Again, I'm going to save myself some time, use the work plane tool to select the top of my keychain, and let's drag out this heart. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And let's say if instead of having it raised like the text is, I want it to be indented. So if I select this, I can turn it from solid into a hole by selecting the hole option on the menu. Right now it's just sitting on top of this. So if I cut this or grouped it, it wouldn't actually change the shape of my keychain at all. So what I need to do is I need to drop it into my keychain a little bit. So using my hat, I'm going to go ahead and push that down. 
And again, I want to make sure it's aligned to the middle of my keychain. So back to my align tool, the middle here. I could even do middle here to make sure it's completely centered. And then right away, I'm going to group so I don't mess that up. And as you can see, now I have a nice little heart-shaped indent. Let's say I wanted to add more holes that cut all the way through. So this could apply to your text. It could apply to whatever shape you put on it. Maybe let's add a small star hole at the bottom. So this time I'm not going to use the work plane tool and show you guys how much longer it would take me to do something like this. So I'm going to make it the right shape. I'm going to make it a hole. I'm actually going to stretch it pretty tall so I know it's going to cut all the way through. And let's say I want two of them. So I'm going to copy and paste it. So I have two. I'm going to drag one to where I want on my keychain. And then the other. And I want to make sure they're cutting all the way through. So I need to make sure they're dropped all the way through my keychain using my little hat option. I want to see on the other side of my keychain sticking out the bottom. And once I've done that, I need to select all three of those shapes, both the stars and my keychain base. Go ahead and group that. And you can see that those cut all the way through. The last tool I want to draw your attention to is the scribble tool under basic shapes. Again, I would use my work plane tool to go ahead and select the front of my keychain because that's where I'm going to want to place the scribble. But once I go ahead and drag that out, this menu is going to pop up for me to draw whatever I want in 2D and then it will make a 3D rendering of that that I could put on my keychain. Let's say I want to go ahead and add smiley faces in the top corner of my keychain. I could go ahead and make two dots as the eye and then a smile underneath. And you could see what that looks like here. Of course, I could scale it to a different size later. If I want to erase it. I could go ahead and press the erase tool or I could go back. Let's say I want to try my smile again. So it's a little bit more even. There we go. And once I'm done, I would press this here. I don't need it to be sticking out nearly that much. And let's say I want it to actually be a hole. So I'm going to turn it into a hole and then drop it in. Move it over a little bit. I want it to be a little bit smaller. I definitely want this to cut all the way through. I'm actually going to make a copy of it so I could put that on the other side. I want it to cut all the way through. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and make sure I could see it through the bottom. Not quite yet. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. down all the way, make sure it's cutting all the way through, and then I need to group both of these. So I'm going to select both my smiley faces and the base of my keychain, group it, and now I have two smiley faces cut all the way through. If I zoom out, this is what my keychain looks like so far. I want to encourage you all to go beyond really basic keychain designs to be really decorative with the features you are using. So whether that means you're creating a couple of different design options, which I think is a great idea, or maybe you start off with a basic design and add more to it using extra holes to scribble, more text, any of the shapes under the all or basic shapes. I'm really excited to see you show these off in our next video as well as email them to us so that we could potentially print them out for you on our Center 3D printers. In order to email these as a file that we can download to our 3D printers, there's a certain way you need to export them. To do that, first you need to make sure that your file is grouped all together. Otherwise, it's only going to print out the objects you have selected. I've been really good about grouping every step that I've done, but if I wanted to double check, I would just select everything on my keychain and then make sure that I could click this group tool. Since I'm not able to click it, I know everything's grouped. The other thing you're going to want to make sure to check is that nothing is floating because the 3D printer is not going to be able to print if the filament isn't directly on top of another object. Nothing is floating. I'm all grouped. I'm ready to export. So I can click this export button right here in the middle. 
And in order for it to be a file that the 3D printer can read, I need to export it as an STL file. So if I download it as an STL, I could go ahead and upload that in an email to STEM Center USA. And then those can go ahead and be downloaded to our 3D printers when we are back for in-person sessions. I hope you all are enjoying this video series so far. I'm really looking forward to seeing the keychains that you all create. And I will see you in the next video.